Hello, Legionnaires, and welcome to episode 129 of RPG Digest. I am John Maxley Oshlow, your favorite curmudgeon, critic, and judge. Along with me today is Brett Heathen Dog Grissomer, as well as our special guest, Kevin Palladium Books and Sean the Owen Robertson. There we go. I had no <laughs> nicknames for you guys. Sorry. I should, should have asked you what your nicknames were. There we go. But real quickly here, we want to thank all of you wonderful people who support us monetarily. Your gracious donations help us provide giveaways, probably a couple today, if Heathen Dog doesn't break my arm first, produce more content, and generally give back to the Legion Myth community as a whole. And of course, we appreciate everyone who subscribes to Legion Myth. We have just over 4,000 YouTube subscribers. Thank you very much. Thankful for each and every one of you. And you can refer to the description below for links to various Legion Myth sites, social media, Discord, merch, etc., and I'm ending it there today. We're not having any more of that introduction nonsense. So, welcome, gentlemen. How are you both doing today? Good. As uh, always happens with these types of live streams, no matter who we have on here, the best conversation already happened. So, bye, folks. We're, we're done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty one. epic. We had a pretty good combo, yeah. <laughs> I got one. Are you in the office right now or at one of your homes? We're, at, we're in my office. You're in your office, okay. Last so, time so, we were in my just office, to let you know, like just to let way. you know, if we do get into a fight, I can be where you are in 30 minutes. <laughs> <Bring it. laughs> well, Heathen Dog was supposed to you actually go drive to... by sometime and hang out. But not not do a drive by Heathen Dog. He said, uh, come "Oh no, no, don't don't say drive by on the internet." Oh, you got a hammer? All right, you. Know, <laughs> know, <laughs> know. Clip this. <laughs> I want to know how uh, Biggest Geek has got there before you did, and they live further away. Still yeah, Michigan, that was but... a great visit. Uh, how many <laughs> kids does he have? Just For, top uh, of your head, a few, but I think they're I think they're probably already past high school they're, and they're stuff. Gone, yeah. <laughs> kids, oh well, oh well, whatever. <laughs> so. Again, thank you for you two being here. Uh, we hope to have a really good conversation today. Like I said, I don't know if we can top what was already done. And of course, after the episode, we usually talk for a couple minutes too. And those are always great. Like everybody who's ever on always says those things, but that's just the way it works with live streaming. But I do have to, I have to start off with this uh, question. Oh, so for folks in chat, we do have yeah. questions. If you've got something <laughs> that you want to ask, go ahead. Super chats will be read at the appropriate time, whether that's the right time or we save it for later. Caveat, anything just blatantly disrespectful i'm gonna ignore and just take your money thank you so all right, so so i just gotta ask kevin this is a two-part question by the way so so bear with me just a moment why sean and sean why kevin <laughs> <laughs> that's my two-part question well, well you, you go first yeah yeah <laughs> well you know it was very interesting because uh, you know i got to know sean through the uh Savage Worlds, um, you know, when they, he became like the line editor of, uh, the riffs for Savage Worlds. And, uh, you know, we would have a lot of business conversations and then that would segue into much like our intro here before the podcast start, you know, we would talk for two hours, you know, about everything else in the world. And, uh, um, you know, I really got to know him and really got to like what he had to say, I, I came to realize he really understood uh, the Palladium game system, really loved it like I do, uh, like you guys do. Mm -hmm. And that's that's huge because you get a lot of people who is like, oh, I love your stuff. And then you start working with them and it's like, how can you love my stuff? Because you don't even really know it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I love the parts that I saw on the cover. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Sean was not like that. Sean really had a depth of knowledge that you rarely see. And then just the way we think uh, is, is very, very similar. Um, and Yeah, that's been fortuitous. That was kind of weird. I, I didn't realize that at first. Yeah, yeah. Although you kind of did because he was like, I don't get it, Kev. It's like we have this weird Malkin, you know, mind bond. And, uh, you know, and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, I used to have that kind of thing with Eric Woodjick. Um, and it's it's very rare. I, I, I mean, you know, I've worked with a lot of great creators over the years and met a lot of great creators. And um, finding that kind of symbiotic relationship and, and, you know, willingness to share, I think, is part of it, too. Because um, there really is no ego be between us. And so, and that's sort of the way Palladium operates anyways. It, it's really 
who has the best idea and how can we exploit it best. Yeah, we want the best product. Uh, exactly. Um, and, and again, that that's rarer than you might think. You know, everyone says shit like that, but they don't necessarily mean it. Uh, and when the Sean and I, it held just before we started this, we were grabbing something to eat. And, uh, you know, Sean brought up uh, something he was working on. And I said, oh, you should incorporate uh, this or that. And, and his immediate reaction was, oh, yeah, that absolutely. That, that makes perfect sense. We already have something built into this yeah. to, to, to accommodate that. Um, and, yeah, it's a great point, Kevin. In fact, I'm going to go run and write it down so I don't forget. Yep. It will be added to Titan Robotics before it, <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> final, the final proofreading of that chapter. <laughs> So, so we would have these conversations, uh, whether they're business or personal, and every time I'd hang up the phone or turn off the Zoom, I would just lean back and go, damn, he's the guy. I mean, every time he would say something and I'd be thinking, he's the guy. And, you know, I don't really have anyone to take over the company um, and, and, or really, truly shares my vision of where the company should go. So, for example, Sean's a big believer in um, we take what's already there and build on it as opposed to let's just trash this or throw that out and do something completely new. It's like, no, we're going to build on the legacy, on the lore that's already there. Um, and, and, ma and matching the themes. That's another thing. that Sometimes people try and build, but they start switching the themes of characters mm -hmm. or... Yeah. Or groups and 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 they if, if you you know that's you have to be very careful with that and then it can be tough yeah you, you, uh, you can easily get into the problem of comic book retconning where you know the, the 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 original purpose of the group in the newer in the newer uh books or editions has completely changed from yeah. from when they were introduced and now it it doesn't make sense to anyone who was around Exactly. And, and I hate that kind of thing. And so Sean and I see eye to eye on a lot of things. I think we also have a lot of uh, similar background or reference from when we grew up. The things we love, we love a lot of the same things, a lot of the same science fiction and superheroes and fantasy and authors and that kind of thing. Which is really just odd. <laughs> We just have a lot of the same influences, even though well, I mean, because there's a 20 you know, age, what it's not quite 20 years age difference, but yeah, it's no, it is, years. yeah, it is 20, yeah, 22. Yeah, so I don't know if I'm supposed to say, Kevin, you don't look that old, or Sean, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Sean, hmm, <laughs> but no, it's weird because you know, I, I, I was a huge fan when I was a kid. This has you know, a funny thing, I was playing Palladium games at the time. But I was a huge fan of um, Bloodborne Crisis. I was I I was getting into anime fairly early for the U.S. One of my buddies is from Taiwan, so we would watch Gundam, but it was in Japanese with Mandarin subtitles. We, had, <laughs> we, we were like trying to figure out what was going Super on. Helpful. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Surprise, surprise! I studied Chinese in high school because of that. I I was just like so fascinated by it. But but yeah, it's one of those odd things where. We both love aliens. You know, we both love a lot of the same yeah. movies. And so it's just odd that when we start talking about things, a lot of times we I he'll he'll start talking about different influences and things. We're also both Kevin and I both have a big love of history yeah. and um, different cultures and stuff like that. And so that's another place where we can really connect. Yeah. He'll, he'll start talking about, you know, his uh, vision for a, a, a Palladium fantasy book that we've got. You know a manuscript in for and he said well it's great but it's not my how i envisioned this and he starts talking to me about it and in five five minutes later he's like i get it whereas he hasn't been able to explain it to anyone else yet they just weren't able to i don't know we're just yeah. wired similarly that way yeah. Um, so to interject for a moment there somebody who's actually tried to work on multiple games for like 20 some years that's actually been a big struggle for for me Anybody who's listening to me talk knows that I'm doing everything on my own because anytime I have talked to somebody about this, not for little parts, I'm talking for like, this is going to be co-written by type stuff, right? Uh, there's a falling out. Usually fairly quickly, it's like, well, I want to do this. Yeah, that doesn't meet the vision of my game. Well, you're, you're, I'm, if you're not going to do it, I say I'm out. Uh, okay, bye. You know, so to find somebody who can share that kind of vision is actually more rare than what uh, a lot of people might think. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, sh sharing a vision 
you know, with a with a you know a different person who grew up in a different household had you know possibly completely different life experiences. Very yeah. rare, but you can you can easily tell an amateur from a professional if they can ride on your vision and still do good work. You know, they right. they, they they come at you with this thing. You're like, no, 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 that's that's not my vision. That's going a different direction. Okay, well, I'll change tack and and go this way. That that is someone you want to hire. Yes. Absolutely. Well, and very sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird you say, like, Sean, why Kevin? Because I was going to do my own thing. So um, just a little bit of brief history about me. Um, I was, uh, well, I was raised Mormon, but I was a Mormon missionary in Taiwan for two years. Um, after you do something and you, you know, like that, I was trying to do a good thing for the world. And after that, everything felt kind of dumb. I uh, worked for Games Workshop and, you know, um, EB Games and some other companies after that. And eventually it was like, I did some, I worked with a jousting troupe. And I was like, I need to do something real because it all just felt inconsequential. And that's when I joined the Air Force. Um, but after, you know, my time as uh, in Air Force intelligence as a Chinese, a China analyst and uh, Chinese linguist, um, you know, I, I went back to school and I, I was like, because I realized I just need to do something that I think is going to be impactful. And, and I, um, I found storytelling. I realized that so that can be so powerful. And so, um, I sacrificed a lot <laughs> of potential income, um, in, in order to pursue the dream of being a writer and designer and, um, very, you know, fairly quickly realized, you know, I, I got a, a great start with pinnacle, uh, love Shane Hensley, Simon Lucas, Jody, and Clint Black, um, and, and everybody else, wonderful people. Um, but I also realized, you know, I'm never really going to get ahead um, if I don't do some of my own things as well. So I, I decided I, 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 I registered a company uh, in in uh, in Texas, and I was ready to run off and do my own thing while still working on Rifts for Savage Worlds um, as kind of my bread and butter and try and bootstrap my own stuff. And um, when Kevin came he, to talk to me, I mean, he, he, I was about to move overseas just so I could lower my cost of living and stuff. Um, and I was looking at either Taiwan or Vietnam. I mean, I already speak Mandarin, so Taiwan was be a great fit. Vietnam, I figured it's, it's actually, I started studying it. It's a lot of it is, it's definitely related to Chinese. We'll put it that way. Okay. Some words sound similar and the same and the, the I was taking to it pretty quickly. Um, but uh, anyways, I uh, I was getting ready. I, and the pandemic, of course, threw a huge wrench in a lot of that. But uh, as I was making headway and getting pre prepared to move overseas, I'd sold like uh, given away 95% uh, of everything. I owned. Actually, more like 99% because it all fit. Wow. Um, I was trying to sell the car, too. <laughs> and Kevin's like, hey, Sean. Uh, yeah, because he's sharing all this. I'm with me. I mean, I'm yeah, telling yeah, you, at this point, we're, we're I'm friends. Like, yeah. And he's like, Kev, do you think I've got what it takes to start a game company and do my own stuff? And, and I'm I, like, absolutely. I had two core game lines that I planned out. Yeah. Um, and uh, Kevin was like, those sound awesome. I think people will love it. You know, and I was like, great. Thanks, Kev. And, you know, and so I was preparing to move overseas. I, like I said, I, I everything I own, even right now, um, except for some of the stuff I've collected in the office, fits in two suitcases and a duffel bag. So wow. um, that was what I, I, I'm serious. I was serious and, uh, and ready to pull the trigger. I was, I was pulling the trigger and yeah. Kevin was like, I hate to throw a monkey wrench in what you're doing, Sean, but what do you think about joining me at Palladium? And I don't, I don't, the, the rest of the conversation was kind of a blur <laughs> um, because it just, it, I got hit out of left field. I couldn't sleep that night. The next day I called him and was like, what do you mean? Your business <laughs> yeah, partner? no, no, no. What, what do you mean? And the next question is, how long have you known? Because I sold 99% of my stuff, <laughs> dude. Yeah, seriously? right. It actually made moving up here very easy. Oh, um, yeah, very easy. You can hit the ride. <laughs> it was all part of my maniacal plan. <laughs> yes, so. Just throw it in the trunk. Strip him over. down. <laughs> strip him down so he has nothing and right. then give him a lifeline. So, so that's Dubaiacal Palpatine. That's <laughs> yeah, 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 really what it was. But no, I mean, it was one of those things where I realized I had the chance to, A, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 
this game, you know, the another strangeness. That was the first my favorite. Just saying, ever, it was the first thing I ever personally owned um, as a role playing game. I started in BattleTech, really was into Turtles and the graphic novels, especially. I got a hold of that. I think I traded some some Turtles comics or some BattleTech stuff for it. Anyways, good move. And I think it was BattleTech actually. Yeah, um, but it was interesting because I then I got into playing Heroes Unlimited and Robotech and and Rifts. And um, I never really left Rifts after that. I, I've played a lot of, I'm one of those guys, I like to play a lot of different stuff. Um, but I always, every year or two, I'm going to come back to Rifts. Um, so, yeah, it was one of those things where Kevin, I, I, once I realized it was, it wasn't just like an employee or writer or even a, even like a CEO. If it, but, as, but if I was going to have, you know, be a, a real business partner, um, that appealed to me. Um, and so, although I would have been tempted if he'd said, I'll offer you this much money to come and help me do X, Y, Z. Um, I mean, I would have been very excited that it would have probably just put my plans on hold for a couple of years, but instead I'm like, okay, I'm in man. You know, mm -hmm. um, I love the system. Uh, I've, I've got a deep respect for it. And, you know, Kevin says we have this mind meld and this mind bond and we really got along and we, the more we did interviews, the more we started talking. Um, the more we got along, but the weird thing is, is yeah, after I got here, I was like, okay, this is getting weird. We started finishing each other's sentences and he's like, yeah, I had this with Eric Wujic. It's totally cool. And I'm like, <laughs> I've never had this. This is weird. Um, <laughs> but we've learned to, you know, just to, to accept it, <laughs> but it makes it, it makes, it makes things, uh, pretty awesome because, you know, if I get stuck on something um, or if I have something that I think is, uh, you know, I was going through Titan Robotics and there was something where I, I said, um, if anyone's read the Raw Edition, um, the Dawn Project, um, I said, you know, Kev, I think this is a really great idea that Matt has, but I think there's something a little off with it. And no no disrespect to Matt. You know, he did an amazing job with it. Um, I said, but I don't think Archie would create these kind of clones and so instead those became synthroids we started brainstorming okay this is, matt has a great idea how do we do it in a way that would still main, maintain you know be true to archie um so and we can and that means that meant that we come up with something that's uh very very unique i think so um but that's that's been the real great thing about working with kevin and the more that we talk and we work on things the more i'm excited about you know, unshackling Kevin from the day-to-day -day work, um, uh, you know, and uh, there's a lot that goes into running a business. And um, because we have, you know, just right over here, right, <laughs> we have a warehouse and orders are going out constantly, right? Um, and uh, there's a lot of things that go on with that. And so, you know, helping Kevin be able to write the books that not only he's the only one that can write those books right i mean he, he, i could get a note from him and he could give me his his cliff note version of what of the outline of what he thinks the book should be but it's still not going to be the same if he doesn't write it right mm -hmm. so that's one of the other things is coming to that and then there's certain things that we have such a great rapport i know if i work on that project that and especially we're here in the same you know the same um studio the same office building then i can easily say hey if i have a question about something then i can make sure that it, st it maintains and stays true to his vision so and then we're just both goofs where everything gives us ideas everything excites us uh, i wish i had that I, I i get stuck in the minutia of the real world <laughs> like well i try to avoid the real world as much as i can <laughs> <laughs> fair enough <laughs> and, and you have the sanity to show it so congratulations there some of us have lost it uh, so so sean you said that you like the the palladium games but knowing as of right now, you, uh, obviously there are going to be some questions about this later, but you know, your Savage Worlds influences and being there, Palladium and Savage Worlds are night and day different. What is it that, that draws system you wise. to? Yes, yeah, system-wise, exactly. Uh, what, what is it that draws you to the Palladium system other than the nostalgia? Can't use my answer. Can't use nostalgia. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if they're as different as some people say. They're On certain mechanical levels, they're extremely different. Um, just the, just the addition of bennies and rerolls. When I run palladium, there's a lot of double checking. Are you sure you want to do that? Do you have any tools you want to use? Does anyone have any other good ideas? Because I'm going to give you all your modifiers for that skill check, right? I'll give you a plus 10%. If, if you just have basic tools or something, 
you might get a penalty or maybe you can you I'll allow you to make the check but it's at a penalty or you can make the check at no penalty but if people say well, we're trying to do this and he's got this laser welder torch and this guy's got this you know I might give you bonuses right um that's that's how play and by the way is intended to be played um <laughs> a lot of people some we, we've said that. that a lot in in our episodes where people complain why do we only have a 30 percent chance because you're just standing there and saying i want to drive a car or i'll give or you whatever. a bonus for good tools if i let other people make skill checks and if they're successful it could give you a bonus mm -hmm. um you know if you have good good if you have extra time facilities you know all these things i think that's where you know the playing comes from a slightly different era of gaming but back in that era, that's how role-playing games were played, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was it was just like there's a lot of things that are expected or implicit amongst gamers today that are very different than yeah. they were, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Um, there were implicit and, and versus explicit um, conventions like this. But anyway, so that's, for me, that can be a huge change, right? That's a technically... You know, mechanically, that's huge change because you don't get rerolls. So then, I'm gonna we're gonna really dig down on, how, you know, what 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 all is gonna modify this skill roll because that's it. When that skill is rolled, it is rolled. Um, at the same time, I think that Savage Worlds and Palladium are both good, uh, are very very similar in that you can play them narratively, um, or you can play them more tactically mm. with a map or drawing a map or putting miniatures down. If you want to, I think they both handle that space very well. They're also both designed to be, you know, Shane would say Savage Worlds is a generic system. Kevin would say Palladium is a universal system, right? I think there there are some differences there, um, but it, the the core intention is that it handles all these different um, ideas yeah. and uh, under one roof. So in that way, yeah. that's why I was that was one of the things that really attracted me to Savage Worlds uh, was that. It's it, it handled those things and in, but in a, it is a quicker, you know, um, l lighter uh, experience. But sometimes for me and my buddies that didn't have a lot of time after I got out of the military, they didn't want me to run rifts. That helped me be able to do it. Um, but at the same time, you know, for me, I, I love the the Palladium system because of one of the things that I really like about Palladium system is the reactionary combat system, the action reaction uh, opposed roles. Um, I think that uh, percentile rolls for skills is is very is very intuitive because we analyze chance. Um, we're, you know, our culture analyzes chance through percentile. Um, we're taught to do that, and so it's very natural for people to to use that in a, in when you just need to have a roll under mechanic um, or in a, you know pass fail mechanic mm -hmm. actually. Is a better way to put that because it, not, it could be roll over or under. But for for opposed rolls, I think rolling a d20 because Palladium is all opposed rolls. You know, it uses a d20. So does Dungeons and Dragons, but Dungeons and Dragons very rarely has opposed rolls. Palladium is constant opposed rolls, and I love that. Um, that that's that's what I think is at the core of and the heart of Palladium combat. The other thing I like about Palladium combat is that it's one action at a time. And it's all interleaved. It's not you take, you move, you act, act, or whatever, right? And then this other person does their things, and then this other, which is very much like, say, if you play a tabletop war game like Warhammer Forty Thousand, my whole army moves, my whole army, you know, shoots, my whole army charges into close combat. Now we have the round phase. It's kind of the same way when you play a lot of role-playing games where you go boom, boom, boom. I do, I move, I attack, I, you know, make my charge, blah, 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 blah. But for Palladium, it's He's running across the room. What do you do? This guy's got an axe. He's running across the room. And one person might say, I run. The other person might say, I pull out my pocket, my, my knife. I'm going to try and fight him. Or the other person say, I charge him. I do a body, uh, you know, I rush him and do a body block tackle. You know, that's what I love about the Palladium system. To me, it's much more cinematic that way. That does mean that it plays slower um, than some, a lot of maybe some of the modern role-playing games. But at the same time, you know, everything's give and take. There's a matter of there's a lim there's limits to the amount of abstraction you have, right? So, Palladium plays really fast compared to BattleTech, <laughs> which I was what how I got into tactical wargaming, right? And wargaming. So when I play Palladium, I'm like it's so fast, like I can, we could do this whole Robotech battle in like an hour, you know, <laughs> or two hours, as opposed to we set up and you know it takes two hours to set up the battle. 
and all your mechs, and then it takes you know all afternoon to play your battle tech game. Um, you know, Palladium was way faster than that. So it, it, a lot of this is relative too, and that's one of the things I always loved about the system is is that it it had that kind of right spot for me as a role player that I didn't find in other systems. I, I think, and we, we've talked about this a lot, and, and like he mentioned, the opposed role, we're, we're doing some play testing on some stuff. And everyone that we've played with uh, who are familiar with other games have never played our stuff just go crazy over the way our combat works in, in, the, in a positive way. Um, and, and the whole opposed role thing, because it feels very interactive. It feels well, it's very... like clashing swords, right? Right. I mean, it, it simulates, you know, a sword fight. You know, I strike, you parry. You know, you strike, I parry or dodge. You know, it's and that was the whole intention. And, and I think the difference between um, Pinnacle and, and Savage Worlds and, and a lot of games that are on the market is that they're very uh rules and action oriented mm -hmm. which is absolutely fine where palladium is much more story and setting and character oriented i mean the rules are there the rules are important but it's about the theater of the mind it's about creating this immersive experience that when you're done it wasn't a game of risk uh it was something much more theatrical and I, and I mean that in the sense of in your mind you you, right. you picture it, it like a like a story like a movie you just saw or play versus you know a chess game yeah. um, well, over the last year I've said many many times every time we, we go over combat with a with a new palladium system I've said many many times that palladium combat is meant to be a more visceral experience Yes. Because that that is the only way to make it work. Uh, for for example, you have all of these special abilities in combat, uh, entangle, body block, trip, you know, all all this stuff, and it's all meant to be used. If you don't use it, it's all I roll this, I dodge with this, I do that. No, no, man, do a trip, do a body block. They they lose initiative, they 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 lose an action. The entire but it's only a D4 of the combat game. changes completely. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can you can overtake a combat by with using two or three special maneuvers that everyone gets at level three. You know what what yep. the hell? Why aren't you using yep. them? And doing that, doing it that way, creates what you were calling a much more immersive experience. It puts you in the eyes of your character, trying to think tactically in mm -hmm. that moment. And a lot of people don't do that. So yes. I stress it every and he, Max Max knows that he got, got he got tired of it after a while. After about six months, he was like, dude, you don't have to bring it up all the time. No, I do. I do because it's absolutely <laughs> necessary. It's just like, no, you don't have to bring up, you have to use D20s every time. Shut up, dude. It's necessary. It's necessary. Yeah, so no, and and he he is right in that. The the thing is like I was interjecting there is like what we'll hear people say is like, well, it doesn't do as much damage. Why would I do the thing that doesn't do as much damage? It's like, look at the other components to it. Look, look at okay, he's knocked down. What does that mean? Takes an action to get up. What uh, uh, stunned? I, I don't even care about knockout. I love stunning people. Stun oh, is the great. best ability in the game, as far as I'm concerned. You're just, <laughs> well, what? Minus whatever. Yeah, keep doing your actions, wasting your bullets. You're not going to hit anything. Have a nice day. Uh, you know, I, there are certain actions that are in the game. They're absolutely phenomenal. But but people, and and this will kind of segue into uh, another question. I'll just ask it earlier. Uh, they they focus on well, it only does a D4 damage. So why why does that matter? Or uh, what it's not i don't i don't see it in my face if there's if there's one thing i would say about the palladium combat i think you're right but expressing that in the books can be daunting to people yes. and i don't know if, if there's a specific answer to this at this moment in time but people look at things like savage world and say combat section three pages got it year zero yep. engine combat section five pages got it palladium combat section well nine pages here but it's also another 30 pages and so oh, another 12 pages well, there let me just throw in something with the savage world system so savage world is deceptively complex because it's it actually presents very simply part of that is how it's organized and presented you know in in, in if you look at it as information architecture right the actual combat action system is very simple but then you have 20 pages 15 20 pages of what does an entangle do? What does a disarm do? What is, you know, sure. of these other maneuvers and statuses. So that's 
some of that's actually just how it's very well laid out and, yeah. and, and presented and as opposed to the core system doesn't have those options. Actually, that's one of the things I like about Savage Worlds is just like in Palladium, you can disarm, right? You can stun an opponent, right? They, 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 you know, they can be vulnerable or, or, or distracted or stunned. So and th those are actually things that are that make it easier to translate over when you're doing conversions. Yeah, well, one and, of my favorite sayings about pretty much everything is everything is a matter of perception and degree. And you know, whether you're, it's politics, whether it's your opinion on anything. You know, everyone's outlook of the world and how things work and what they like and don't like is, is, is different. And one of the things that happened with Palladium is, is we kind of grew organically and we kind of, things aren't as clearly and well presented as, as they could be and should be and, and will be in the future. Um, and I think that that has a, 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 a a real that plays a real role in I think people's current perception of the game and the complexity of the game. You know, even among haters, um, when I would sit down with someone, in fact, it would be funny because be like, "Oh, the Palladium game system's broken." I'd be like, "Hey, come here, talk to me. Tell me what's broken. Tell me what's broken." And and, and I'm waiting for well, this mechanic blows and this mechanic doesn't work and this is just bogs everything down. And, and it really almost always boiled down to the rules aren't consistent throughout the entire Megaverse. If you play Nightbane, you can play the same skill that you, you see in Rifts, but it, it's slightly different or offers a different bonus or has a different description. Uh, and it's different again in Palladium Fantasy and it's different again in Heroes Unlimited. And that bothers people. It drives people nuts. And, and honestly, I kind of get it because whenever I use, whenever I'm writing something for uh, Chaos Earth as a great example, it should be exactly the fucking same as Rifts, right? It just makes sense. What the hell was I thinking when I shortened the skill list? And I'm always looking at the damn thing and I'm like, where's this skill that I use all the time in Rifts? And it's like, not there. And it's like, what the hell? So I get it. I get that frustration. <laughs> that should be a real. <laughs> yeah, that, that is that is definitely going to be it. Yeah, you 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 actually uh, adjusted your camera on that one. <laughs> but, but is that broken? Is that broken? No, it's just fucked up. And it is. Well, no, no. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I, I I think of it like this. And and uh, when when you said uh, grown organically, it actually solidified what I thought about about the the Palladium system. Uh, let's let's take a a uh, let's just let's do this for Sean, a a bonsai tree, okay? And if you if you cultivate it for years, taking precise action at every precise moment, it will be it will be beautiful close up or far away because everything is deliberate. Ev everything had a place. Everything had a plan. But something that's grown organically, when you zoom in on it on any section, it's going to look haphazard. Only when you look back at the entire thing as a whole can you appreciate the beauty of something growing organically on its own. And a lot of people have that problem, in my opinion, with Palladium. They, they look at, they take a too close a look and say, well, this is, this is bad, or this is bad, or this is bad. But when you zoom out, when you take the whole thing as, as, a, as, a, as a complete unit, it does work together when when you know lo looking looking at the at, at the whole thing at one time but a lot of people get zoomed in and they, they get stuck in the minutia and they they don't understand uh why doing that may may give them a bad perception of something that's actually pretty good and so okay yeah i get it right and and and, and the uh, the thing i will say with that is you know there's two things one gee whiz you know riffs has what 90 supplements now Oops. Yeah, you. Um, you know, so <laughs> you didn't memorize them all. <laughs> Jesus I'm trying, but it's page not... 32 of phase world. Go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me tell you the PDF Adobe Acrobat Pro has an advanced search. You can search for a term across all PDFs within a folder. Hmm? That is amazingly helpful. <laughs> um, sometimes. So, um, 
but but yeah, I want I I I I want to say that there there the the big sin that Kevin has committed is cut and paste. That, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> is that he hasn't been putting out edition after edition after edition, mm. right? It's he has. I mean, sure, the the Rifts Ultimate Edition or Heroes Limited Revised or Second Edition, Play in Fantasy Second Edition. Those are actually second editions of that game, not complete rewrites of the core system. And and you know um, that that there there again every for every a action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Everything's a double edged sword. You know, there's 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 pros and cons to everything. And so part of this is is yes, you have something like that that grew slightly differently in this game system or that one and when or that still, we experimented or with. The, you experimented with it he, he does a lot of experimenting right and he you know he just, I, I wrote when he told me that he's like oh well, we're experimenting with experimenting with that no one had done this before so we tried this out and sometimes right? it worked sometimes <laughs> it didn't <laughs> you know it's still the damn book and <laughs> reads it goes what the hell is this right Where did this come but, from you know that's why Palladium has, you know, 12 different intellectual properties instead of two in five editions, mm -hmm. right? It has one edition, sometimes revised editions of those individual properties, but, but you have a much more expansive wide playground because instead of tidying and tidying and tidying, there was, there has been, there have been those efforts made. I'm not saying they haven't been made, but uh, instead of that kind of comprehensive, it's been let's do something new, let's do something exciting, let's do BTS yeah. second edition, right? And let's, yeah, I'm going to tie up some of these skills and make sure that it fits with this and that, but we're going to push forward. And so I, I, I you know, um, and 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 there's and there's other reasons for that kind of stuff too. I mean, Kevin's, uh, you know, seen the need for different things, like he was just talking about. But um, you know, also it's like, do you have the time to do that? Do you have the luxury of doing that? as a smaller game publisher um or do you keep you know putting out stuff that fans have been waiting for as opposed to going and redoing your core rules or or representing them or something like that so those are those, those are all all decisions that have to be made and um you know it, it's it, it's there's a lot of times there's not a right or wrong answer or sometimes the right answer in your circumstances it's you know People aren't going to like that that's the answer. I mean, I get all the time. Oh, it could be right for me and not right for Heathen Dog or vice versa as well. I mean, the fan base, uh, it just what you were saying there about that perception is one of the things that I've learned in, in having a, a podcast, a, a YouTube channel, is I've been very lucky in my game groups. I've played all over the world. I, I can name multiple countries, multiple states. Part of it is with the military, part of it is not. It's, but I've always found players that play like me. My assumption was until just a couple of years ago that pretty much everybody played like me because I have found these players literally everywhere and come to find out I might actually not only that might not be true, but I might be the minority because I come to find that it seems on one hand you've got the and I know I'm not saying this derogatorily, but you have the LARPers, the improv gamers that don't sure like rules the focuses, way. Right. Then, then, yeah. then you have the flip side. You have have like like, oh, uh, you, you're not you're not even playing the game you've changed too much it's not the game anymore and I, and I know i can fall into that i like to think of myself as somewhere in the middle but i'm hardcore in the middle you game too hard you are you larp too much you know so we all have our little facets in there and it's been eye-opening to me to actually talk to a lot of people like that so when you're writing that game as you said you get these perceptions what what drives you uh, is it is it your vision or is it more about fan feedback is there some combination thereof yeah, I think it's kind of a combination. Um, I, I think what's affect a lot of people's perceptions too is, uh, and you see it in, in our games. Is I grew up in when when role playing was in its infancy, and so at that time, and for like the next decade or decade and a half, you everyone had house rules. Everyone made up their own worlds. You know, you didn't need a source book. I and mean, yes, there were rules lawyers, but not not so much. Things were, were a lot more flexible. And, and Wild me, West. <laughs> and me being at, at the Detroit Gaming Center, I saw all kinds of different styles of play. And I saw people having a blast playing with this guy who I would never in a million years play like that. And I saw guys playing, you know, this other style. And I'm like, yeah, it's all right, but it's not for me. And then I had my style, and, and there were all these variations of that. And I think what kind of happened with the uh, 
I think more than anything, and it kind of coincided, both kind of happened at the same time, was the uh, explosion in collectible card games and video games, where everything is very linear, everything is very clear, everything is very simple. And then board games got Keywords. that renaissance. And, you know, so I think a lot of people these days, and, and we kind of heard this echoed at the Lions Trade Show, uh, where we heard people saying, uh, where we heard retailers saying, yeah, give us an introductory game because we can sell those all day. Mm -hmm. Because everything's there, everything's presented on a simple level, and it's typically in a box, there's typically a map, there's often uh, uh, playing pieces that represent your character, it's much more in a format. And again, you get back to perception. What do most people know? Card games, board games, video games. And, and that's why some people, some game company, role-playing game companies try to capture more and more of that without trying to get, try to capture some of that simplicity, but keep the story elements that are true to role-playing. And so I think a lot of people, especially newbies coming in, they see a game line with, with 90, you know, source books and they go, <laughs> or, or, or a rule book that's 300 pages and they go, holy shit, I'm used to a pamphlet that's, you know, maybe 16 pages. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't negate one game or another. It just, it, it's, it's, a, it's a new perception that we have to think about and address and see how we want to address. And that's what I was trying to say earlier when I said the implicit and explicit expectations of the target audience have changed vastly over these generations of time or decades of time that's what i'm that's what i was Absolutely. trying yeah probably failing to say as cleanly no, yeah, but, as kevin did right but the idea right. but but the idea is is that yeah the those expectations have changed yeah. you know and the thing is is guess what you if you go pull open palladium fantasy the actual core rules is just it would be equivalent to that pamphlet you just got 200 pages worth of, of cool stuff but you know people are expecting things to be formatted and presented differently um than you know these days than they were back then you know yeah. by definition you couldn't have had people playing collectible card games vi computer games video games uh you know app games uh or you know most board games besides a, a few back in the 80s yeah. they didn't exist right there those things weren't there so now that those are a big part of the broader gaming experience and market which has grown larger than hollywood uh you know sales wise and, and mm -hmm. income and all that um that means that there's that, that, that it's a, it's a very different animal these days uh doesn't mean the core game is not a great core game right right it just means that you know we need to look at ways that we can you know present it for the new the new audience or or even you know the old audience whose expectations have changed yeah. and that's, that's um, something that we've talked about a bit you know uh, that one of the things that i like about the tabletop gaming hobby is that to, i always liken it to train stops if you like your white box dungeons and dragons barely outside a chain mail game and you want to play that you get off at that first stop if you want to go all the way to the other end and play something like fate core or cosmic patrol and not even have rules in your game and just have an improv lesson fine play that there's nothing wrong i mean for me i don't like them but there's nothing wrong with those games and the existence of those games yeah, amber diceless yeah, yeah. And, oh yeah that, <laughs> we have a couple of uh, of our fans who love amber diceless i despise that game <laughs> uh, I played it. I played it once in like 1991 or something like that, and I'm like, I'm what, what am I gambling for my character for? No, but uh, but I get but I get that people do like that, and I love having those options out there. The caveat to that being, don't change what we already have. I don't want Palladium to change. Yes, would I like it to be formatted differently? More the evolution. That's what I was, where I was going with this. The evolution. The hobby has evolved, and some things you kind of do need to keep up with if we're going to move. Absolutely. But if I see the rules change, I'm going to freak out, you know, because because the, the system itself actually works. So there's going to there's got to be a balance in there somewhere. And of course, that's for you guys to decide, not me. But uh, uh, that I think could attract a new generation because the lore, the settings, 
each book, 85 rifters, yada, yada, are absolutely so amazing and just build upon it. And something you said earlier, Sean, was we're not changing anything. We're building upon it. And you can't know how much somebody like me respects that because so many modern games are being changed. Sixth edition Shadowrun is nothing like first edition Shadowrun. Fifth edition D&D is nothing like old TSR D&D. I could go down the list. Right. Palladium. For, for whatever complaints people might have about first and second edition, and they're all over my Discord. I agree with some. I don't agree with others. Uh, but it's still the same basic game. Still I love the that. same way, you know, for, for, for most part. <clears throat> an, an, an attack is an attack. A, a dodge is a dodge. A parry is a parry. You know, all, all the mechanics are there. Uh, SDC is still there. It's just more. There's just more of it. Second edition, that's basically it. It's still there. MDC is understandable if, if you're going into a futuristic environment. Okay, great. The, it's all there. I mean, the, the, the course of 40 years of evolution has been has been a theater rather than system. It's been settings right. rather than rather than uh, uh, rules changes. That's that's a great which way. I, to which I love. And uh, uh, speaking of uh, of rules and uh, uh, formatting. Uh, after the bomb, second edition. Just go ahead and uh, Kevin, uh, Ke you're you're the you're the captain of uh, <laughs> cut and paste. So just 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 take just uh, take the 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 combat rules from after the bomb, second edition, and just put it into all games moving forward. Out of all of the combat rules that that you've written in all the forty years, or you've you've looked at in all the forty years, that is the most concise and easy to understand examples are exactly where you expect examples to be the the order of explanation is exactly the order of an ex explanation everyone expects it to to go as it's beautiful i cried a little bit i actually re-watched re that that episode we did on after the bomb to to see okay i, I want to be able to articulate exactly why i read the book this that. morning <laughs> yeah and and when i was talking about it i saw myself get a little a little verklempt i was getting a little a little teared up talking about it it was so good co compared to compared to the other three we did that year before that it was so concise and so beautifully done i don't know who well, we, we uh, i don't know, I don't know if you too. woke up from a dream and <laughs> and you were like oh i gotta write this down and then you got it or or, or someone like a uh, i don't know santa came and 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 rewrote it for you i don't know i have no idea what alien nonsense happened to make that one perfect but especially that one since perfect. he hates after the bomb <laughs> and, oh no the the background for after the bomb is utter trash it's absolute garbage. <laughs> you know, second edition after the bomb the, the whole background and, and how we got there is like oh a, a a series of unbelievably stupid failures that, that's that's how we got here you know but by 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 the time i finished reading the the uh background section of the second edition of after the bomb i didn't want to look at the book anymore i was i was disgusted i want to go back to first edition but the combat oh my god it's like i you still know, love after the bomb oh oh crappy mac, mac and cheese that someone decided to put vinegar in for some reason that's the background and then the actual combat is like three-star michelin beauty it's, it's tell, us, tell us how you really feel <laughs> yeah, don't hold back oh no, no no i haven't gotten occs yet you don't know how i really feel, I really feel but i i think this is a good time to look at some chat because we have some questions that yeah. i think is pretty appropriate yeah, All we right, can't I mean, see that. We can't see that in here. So no problem. I, I, I pick some, I add, I remove, I delete, yeah, whatever, until we have a good number of them. And of course, yeah. we got to have some. I like Kevin's shirt. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we can't see it anymore because of the because of the rage thing. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, Heathen Dog rage. isn't the only one. Yeah, Heathen Dog smacked his camera one time on some episode, and people replay that one. It's awesome. Yeah, they replay that a lot. <laughs> Question. Now that we've asked why Kevin and why Sean, the next question is why Savage Worlds out of all other universal systems out there were other systems considered? Well, I think that that comes from a that's the wrong way to approach it because it's not like Palladium went. I see this all the time. I try and explain it to people. Palladium didn't go and approach Savage Worlds and say, we want to use your system to make a game like I never got a paycheck from Kevin until i came which is here. why you were about to move to taiwan yeah <laughs> i was i got my paychecks from pinnacle pinnacle licensed the riffs setting from palladium it is not palladium asking pinnacle to make a riffs game uh, some people seem to have that really backwards um and and that's okay that's you know sometimes there are these like 
really fundamental misconceptions about what's going on. And it's just, you know, that's okay. The, the, this business is a little weird and it's a niche of a niche business, right? Tabletop within gaming and then role playing within tabletop. So, um, that's, yeah, but that's why, um, it, you know, that happened was because those, you know, you know, Pinnacle came to Kevin to get the licensing opportunity. Yeah, it was, it was at, it was at higher levels that, that the, the, the collaboration was going on and then it got to your level and you're like, okay, I, I can make this work. Yeah. And you went ahead and, and tried to make it work. See, I, I, yeah, I it's just, it's tried just you know, <laughs> yeah, they, 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 you know, Shane and Sean Patrick Bannon approached Kevin yeah. Yeah. and asked to license riffs and they pay royalty to Kevin. Right. Um, yeah. And then they paid, and then Shane paid me um, to write a book and then paid me to, do the second edition, the suede edition of the Savage Riffs. Um, Playtest and feedback period and all that jazz. Which is on. the edition I have. So I do I do actually own that one, suede and the three Tomorrow Legion. Well, if there are more than three, I have three Tomorrow Legion. <laughs> uh, see, are there any plans to incorporate recon into the Palladium system? It's certainly not at this time. Is recon just out of curiosity, I've never actually played recon. I know it's different, but is that still a, a decent seller? Or is that one of those that kind of just comes and goes? Um, it does all right. Um, you know, it, it was bigger, you know, ten years ago. But okay, you know, here's a good one. What Palladium game should a newbie start with? Generally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 it, it sounds kind of odd. I think, but Dead Rain, which is our zombie apocalypse game. Uh, again, I think oh, Max does not like that at all. He mm. just he just beat himself a little bit. Well, well, <laughs> well just for for specific reason. Yeah, it, it's it, I think it's presented very simply. There's no magic. Uh, there's no psionics. If you're looking to discover the basics of the Palladium rules and how things work, uh, I think it's a great game to to start with. And you okay, know, a lot, like and people the, have even said it in chat as well. You know, where we're saying that we like the after the bomb combat chapter, uh, a lot of people said in chat that Dead Rain is like the actual best overall combat system right up. Well, yeah, that that's just because the whole book isn't talking about anything else. But you know, you but, lose magic, you lose psionics, you have a right. lot more space to really flesh out what's left. And that, part I of think, that is combat. If so, you don't yeah. like. Yeah, if you don't like zombies, I think system failure might be another good place to approach just because... Mm, oh. again, well, thank you for that and the Christmas surprise. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. You are welcome, yeah. <laughs> uh, nope, already asked that one. Here we go. Kevin's writing and imagination are amazing. Great to see him. So definitely That's got some fans here. I look at you got to have some positivity. Because I know your questions, sir. Okay. <laughs> and of course, thank you, Patriot Gestalt. Got to thank you for the $20. Appreciate that. Now, the most fun I've had recently was playing a Savage Worlds one shot. See, we have some Savage Worlds. I, you fans. know what? I, I get that. The uh, to to look at the at the uh, Tomorrow Legion, I actually looked at Savage World system first, and I have never played it in a group, but it's good. I mean, it's it, it's simple, it's direct, it's as complex yeah. as you want it to be, and mm -hmm. and as simple as you need it to be. I get it. Well, I like the, one of the things I, I do like about it is it's it's got a pulp feel to the base level system. Yeah. But they also have a lot of um, the, the the different setting rules so that you can if you want more horror or realism or or higher, you know, fantasy combat and you want to tweak things. That's that's another great thing is that it's similar. So Palladium has a lot of that. It's just it's less presented as explicitly where, you know, you, they might say. Hey, in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Prowl just starts off twenty percent higher because everybody's ninjas, right? Or in or or Heroes animals Limited, are naturally carrying seen. energy blasts, right? Right, but you know it's this it's the same effect. It's just not organized the same way right. and presented as this is an optional rule just for this setting, right? But that but that is one of the things that's cool about it too is that like with Savage Rifts. We had stuff for, I added a, a rule for when you get hit, if you have a non-mega damage target getting hit by mega damage, you know, it starts breaking limbs and tearing people up and giving them injuries um, just to help bring that 
concept over from. The, oh, don't worry. We're, we're going to talk about that later. Uh, it's, it's funny because you, you've hit on a topic that I'm going to address later about five times. I keep on to ask. It's like, no, I've got that for later. That's going to be a big one. Um, and you said something. Well, you know, I'm just going to move on here. I, my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through. We got great questions. <laughs> so, um, I do wish that played in with pre-bake OCCs. This is something that's uh, arrived a lot on Discord. And when I first heard it, I was like, you know what? That's a really good idea. Uh, would pre-bake the OCC skill percentages into the listing for the OCC? Why make me go look them up? And as somebody who's just recently made a Rifts character again, I was uh, that flipping through. I never realized it was a problem before, maybe because I was just used to it. But yeah, it's like if they were just right there in that column and all I have to do is add my int to it. Oh, that. Yeah, heck yeah. Let's do that. Sure. No, that's a great idea. That's great feedback. Thank you. Uh, that, keep skipping that around here. Differently than in my head, but okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, for ten dollars, thank you, weird guy. He says, uh, "All I want is strike bonuses for melee and range to have different terminology, such as plus one to hit versus plus one to aim. Then you won't confuse them and accidentally add them together." Okay, okay. I, I I get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With with a, with an initial read through of melee and range combat, there is a common confusion with uh, what bonuses to use and what bonuses not to use. After, right. after after you play it once to three times, you get it. But in the initial read-through and, and the first play, it's like, well, why why doesn't my my uh, 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 bonus work for range, but it, this bonus works for melee or vice versa? No, no. Why yeah. is it that, you know, I have to use the, the, the skill bonuses but I get to use my my physical prowess bonus sometimes, but not other times. Right. I don't get it. I don't understand. That right. happens a lot. Right. And, and that's in part of it because that those are both just strikes, right? So right. Yeah. I, if my hand to hand, I, I run this too. Right? Yeah. Why don't they work the same? Yeah, I have good buddies. They're new 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 to Palladium, right? And they're playing in my game, and they're saying the hand to hand bonus to strike does that apply when I shoot my gun? Because the hand, because that's where my actions. For combat come from you see what i'm saying and yeah, and yeah, yeah. no absolutely we, 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 we that is enough that's something we've already the, discussed the, we're aware of. we are aware of those things and we think those are great suggestions okay, okay. now uh i'm gonna i'm gonna decipher that for everyone watching when, whenever sean or kevin say that's a great suggestion that means they already have approved something about it to to change <laughs> in the future but they're not going to tell you <laughs> That's pretty much what it means. So they, 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 they've already, they've corporate already speech. thought about it to, to, to such a fashion that they've written something down, or they've gone they've gone so far as to oh no we've already fixed it we're just not going to tell you yet. I'll add one more to that. Timestamp it and bring it up to Kevin five years from now. And say why didn't you do that one? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, will we get a conversion guide for existing Platinum Rifts material to suede? No, no, Same. that's that's what the suede books are. I mean that's what that's what the Savage Rifts books are. If you look at them, they are conversion material as fast as we can convert it and include some adventures with just the minimal breakdown of the world and the factions to do it minimal justice. You know, the Savage Worlds books, the at the very first page of the Savage Rifts uh, material, there is a list um, in a sidebar that says these are all the book Palladium books that we brought this material from. The books are not intended to replace the Palladium books. If you want to learn more about Lemuria or Atlantis or, you know, whatever, and you have the Atlantis and the Demon Seas book for Savage Rifts, go read those books too, right? This is your entry point. This has all the rules conversions and the gear conversions and, uh, you know, new powers and, and you know, bio wizardry, you know, rules and tattoo magic and stone magic rules mm -hmm. so that you can play this stuff. And we give you an overview, enemy statistics, and adventures. I mean, it's it's if you look at it, it's very it's it's a minimum of world building. Um, okay. But I mean, I still think that we do a good job with those I books. Too. Um, Kevin said he was blown away at how briefly those books can introduce a lot of the details. Um, but it's not meant to be the deep dive. But yeah, that that that's as fa we're doing it as fast as we can. Same thing with the Titan Robotics. I've got in the um, conversion stuff for the um, Titan Robotics book and the, uh, um, well, I guess the the uh, the Cyberworks collection, including like mechanoids and stuff like that. And it's you know that's one of the reasons we did that is it's, that's 
we can do it now or you can wait who knows how long so we're trying to do that now uh while we can you know uh, you know okay. as a as a bonus for the titan robotics um kickstarter for instance, right. right so okay. for five dollars keith hunt for super chat thank you very much maybe not do a full riffs aftermath for the minion war on riffs earth but a nice long section rifter number 86 would sure hit the spot oh yeah, we're not we're not we're not to that point yet <laughs> No. There are some books coming um, that are part of Ooh. the ongoing progression of the Minion War story. So, like, for instance, Rift's uh, Manhunters, right? Coalition Manhunters yeah. had a lot of stuff about that. Titan Robotics has a lot of stuff about... Yeah, the Disavowed Will, uh, yeah. Coalition uh, Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah. Just a couple more here before we go on to... Hang talking. on, no, wait, wait, wait. The, the whole, the whole uh, putting official stuff in non-official books always makes me so sad i want to kick my dog oh <laughs> poor doggy. all right no horrible idea horrible idea so, so rifter not... the rifter is 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 going to basically remain non-official right if it's exactly. official yeah you, you, you start doing that right you, you start diluting your ip and it it, it becomes see-through and garbage so yeah, yeah that's this, always a bad idea that was something that was fact, who, who asked that question ban that person Hey, it's a five dollar. It's a five dollar super chat. I'm not banning somebody who pays five dollars. Oh, I've seen it in multiple chats. Five dollars yeah. brought you one more chance, Kevin. Ban him. <laughs> Watch your P's and Q's, son. Right. <laughs> and you know, for for some folks out there, holy smoly, Palladium is real. Yes, it is real. It's very real. It's it's been been real. real. About, what you think we wrote this shit? No. <laughs> All right, what do we have here? Kevin's attention to detail is amazing, even when dealing with superpowers, which has inspired me on my own RPG, but has also caused massive delay to finish it. <laughs> Welcome to <Okay>. writing books. <laughs> now, I, 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 I'm sure Ke Kevin is, is going to be much more articulate than this, but when, when, when you want massive detail, you're going to get massive delays unless you you really really have a system and i would love to know kevin's system that answers this question how do you deal with such great detail but also get your books out while you know you're uh, a whole other generation of people aren't, aren't living and dying <laughs> <laughs> well I, I i write pretty quick <laughs> oh thanks a lot that helps no one and uh you know, it is always tricky. I, I, when people ask me what's the hardest thing about writing a role-playing game, uh, I always say it's figuring out what does not go in the book. Because um, mm. it's always that balancing act of what's really important, what's good. You know, and over the years, I've gotten better at, you know, sitting back and going, why is this in the book? Why did I put this in the damn book? Uh, you know, this should be an NPC. It should not be a, a, a player character. Or an OCC, yeah. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be an OCC. It should be an NPC. Um and stuff like that but it, yeah it, it's always tricky and you got to be careful not to get bucked too bogged down in, in the details i uh, mean you know think about your audience think about if you were buying and playing this game you know what is it that you really want what is it you're really looking for because there's been some arguably great games that were close to unplayable um that's come out over the years because of the amount of of, of detail um, so you don't want to bog it all down with detail, but you want to capture enough of it. And then what's fun, you know, the, the thing that really helps me is I sit back and go, what will make this a more fun experience for the players and the game master? Um, detail in the right areas too. For instance, um, the ley lines and rifts are really fleshed out. But the first time Kevin saw someone who had talked a lot about the ley line concept, um, write about it. It was only a few paragraphs. Yeah. Um, this is on for the original beyond the supernatural, yeah. right? So, yeah. um, you know, just a, sometimes it's like, you know, Kevin is really good at that at saying, Hey, this is a really cool idea. We need to expand it and blow it up. You know, and that's, that's, that can be real challenging. Um, cause I could write all day about what, you know, <laughs> yeah. Argent Goodson and Colonel Larson do on vacation together. But, <laughs> um, and that'd be actually maybe be really fun to write, but I mean, is that, you know what's the main point that's relevant for yeah. the damn source book, exactly right? i always think about <laughs> what is relevant to the to the player and in, in the gameplay right um, i mean what, what I've, I've never i've never tried to, to write a game system but whenever i'm whenever i'm outlining or fleshing out an adventure or a campaign what i what i what i do is uh uh is a uh 
a dating trick where you 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 think of your perfect partner and you write down the the top five or top ten things you want in your perfect soulmate. Choose That's three good. if there's five, choose five if there's ten, lose the others. So when, yeah. when, when I'm thinking of an adventure, I think of that. What do I want to put in this thing? And I'll write five things or ten things. And I'll say, okay, if I wrote five things, I eliminate two. I stick with the, my, my top three. If I wrote ten things, I eliminate five. I stick with my top five and go from there. That always, that always helps me get to the end in some kind of you know normal human time frame. Th that's actually pretty good advice. Surprisingly, uh, shockingly. <laughs> yes, got that to dig good. into. I'm clipping that, that with the dig. That yes. <laughs> oh, just wait till we get to witches and shifters. Oh my goodness. See, see okay. Ke Kevin's Kevin's starting it early because he yeah, knows he's got to get his wits in before he starts crying. But hey, let's give Kevin some good news. You can tell I just bought the Dead Rain PDF. Yay! Oh. All right, Victor. <laughs> You'll enjoy it. Okay, I'm um, going to kind of say, again, no hard segues here or anything like that, but I do want to uh, kind of switch tones. This is going to be a little bit more of a lightning round, if you want to call it that. Answer, answer how you see fit. But some of these questions, I know you've answered a lot before, even when you were here. So uh, just people keep asking them, so I want to keep bringing them up. Yeah, no, that's right. And the first one is,